Welcome back. It's still Saturday, the 24th of July. Now, I wanted to bring a study to you that really explains a lot about what's going on in the world at the moment with this Delta variant and why it is so much more transmissible than the previous variants. And I must say, I was pretty surprised by the results and it's related to the extremely high viral load that's generated very early on in the condition when someone is infected with the SARS coronavirus 2 Delta variant. So let's look at this data now. Um, it really is quite, I was actually quite taken aback. I must say I had um, read a couple of popular news reports about this uh, recently and I thought well, it can't it can't be a thousand times more viral though but it is so so let's let, let's get the detail um so viral infection and transmission in a large well-traced outbreak caused by the delta sars coronavirus 2 variant and this is published in virological.org which is like a well, I suppose you could call it a chat group for virologists and biochemists, but it's a very good one and <laughs> very thorough papers on there. And it's reinforced by publication uh, uh, talking about it in Nature Journal as well. Now, it's conducted in China when they had their Delta variant problem when it started to come in China recently. Now, um, all 167 infections traced back to the first index case. So they traced 167 of the delta infections in china and they're able to trace them all back to one index case pretty impressive piece of um of uh, detective work there actually by the by the chinese uh, contact tracers so nice piece of work and they collected full data from 126 so the n is 126 and that, that's quite a good number and what they did was this n what number of 126 people who were quarantined uh, basically, they were quarantined, so they, they had them there and were able to uh, collect good quality data from them and follow them up as a very exacting cohort study. And that's what this study basically is. Now, the daily sequence PCR testing of the quarantine subjects, 126 of them. And they found the viral load was greater than 100 times than that of the 19A, 19B strain. Now, this was the original strain that caused the pandemic in the first place way back in well starting in uh in um well it's SARS it's COVID-19 is it started in starting in 2019 back in November December 2019 19A and 19B they were the original strains so they're finding the viral load that people are producing is over a thousand times higher than that if they're infected with the Delta variant a direct quote from the paper uh, suggesting that the potential faster viral replication rate and more infection, infectiousness of the Delta variant at an early stage of the infection. So suggesting that is what, what they're saying. So they're not saying that um, the spike protein on the Delta variant can't uh, adhere, uh, adsorb better onto the receptor site. Maybe it can. They're not commenting on that, but they are saying this. So over a thousand times viral load, it's just immense that the body's producing more than a thousand times more viruses, or, or at least excreting, um, breathing out, coughing out, singing out, talking out, a thousand times more virus. No wonder it's more transmissible. It's just incredible. I must say, I was really quite taken aback. Direct quote, disease control measures including the frequency of population testing, quarantine and pre-symptomatic in the pre-symptomatic phase and enhancing the genetic surveillance should be adjusted to account for the increasing delta, for the increasing prevalence of the Delta variant at a global level. In other words, we need to take full account of this or we're in trouble. And they did note a lot of intra-family transmission, household transmission. Of course, that's exactly what we saw in the UK when this uh, variant first arrived from India. We saw exactly the same thing. Now, the first thing they comment on is the incubation period. And this is interesting as well. So incubation period in 2020 for the original strain, the 19A and the 19B strains. Exposure to first PCR positive test was six days. So six days incubation period from when someone was first exposed to the virus until they tested positive for the first time on their PCR test. That was six days. Uh, interquartile range between, in other words, 50% of the cases were between five and eight days in the 2020 uh, epidemic in China. So basically six days, six days. Incubation period in 2021 down to four days. And there, the interquartile range, 50% of those cases fell within 
three to five days. So we see a shorter incubation period with the Delta. Shorter incubation period. Interesting. So that's interesting in its own right. But then they go on to discuss the viral loads, which is where it gets really quite surprising. And I was taken aback by this. But this is being reviewed by virologists all around the world as we speak. And they're not throwing their hands up in horror saying this is rubbish. So relative viral loads, 2020. When the SARS, this is when SARS coronavirus 2 viruses are first identified in the hosts. So when it's first identified in the hosts. And we saw it's earlier with the, uh, the Delta and uh, longer incubation period with the original 19A19B strain. Now, the CT value needed to first diagnose this is 34. And the interquartile range there is 31 to 36. In other words, 34 replications are needed with the original type virus. 34 cycle thresholds, 34 replications of the virus are needed to get a positive test. And of course, the more CT, the more cycle threshold you need to get a positive test, the lower the initial viral load. If the viral load is higher, that will show up with less duplications. So that was the initial figure there, um, 34.31. In other words, a lot of cycle thresholds, 34 cycle thresholds were needed to detect the presence of the virus because the virus is at relatively low concentrations. Now, relative viral loads in 2021 with Delta, uh, what, was the, what was the situation? Well, the CT value there was down to 24. In other words, only 24 replications into quartile range 19 to 29, as opposed to into quartile range of 31 to 36 with the old type. So the CT value there, the average CT value was 24 as opposed to 34.1. In other words, they only needed 24 cycle thresholds to get that positive reaction as opposed to 34 because the viral load was so much higher, it needed to be duplicated less in order to become detectable. So what a difference. 34.1 to detect it with the old original type. Only 24 cycle thresholds needed with the Delta because the viral load was so much higher. And they've calculated that the Delta variant infections are 1,260 times higher than the viral loads. I mean, dear me, than the 19A19B original strains. So 1,260 times higher viral load. It really is quite incredible. And if you think about that viral, the, the, the amount of viruses that people are shedding there, or at least the viral shedding, it is 1,260 times higher. That is just an immense amount of viruses that one infected person is, is uh, extruding out in, into the environment. And of course, these are aerosolized in the same way. They can hang in the air. The droplet infections in the same way. The contamination of surfaces is the same. But of course, airborne infection is the main route of transmission, both through droplets and uh, aerosolized infection. So there you go, I was taken aback, but that's what the science says, so that's what we have to believe. So these data highlight that the Delta variant could be more infectious during the early stages of the infection, very much so, because it's only um, a CT value of, uh, 30, of 24 as opposed to 34. So these data indicate that a Delta variant could be more infectious during the early stages of the infection, and Delta variant exposure, uh, Delta variant exposure to the detection of peak viruses occurs at round about just 3.7 days after initial infection. So what we see is with the Delta variant, we see a massively higher viral load detected by a much lower cycle threshold PCR test. And we see a shorter incubation period in these two things, but particularly the higher viral load is plenty to explain uh, the greatly increased transmissibility of the Delta variant. So that's that one. We're now going to go on and uh, look at with Afaru who's on day two of his community outreach project. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of our community outreach program. As I promised, uh, we are finally going to 
our community again. But today I'm very happy because uh, we've gotten enough things, actually most of the things that we needed for today's outreach uh, because of the donations you guys made. I just want to thank you all and I pray that God will bless you. So the other time, as you saw, we didn't have gumboots, but I'm happy. Now today we have, <laughs> I have even put on uh, the gumboots. We didn't have uh, the sanitizer, we now have. Uh, we were also able to get some masks, uh, we were able to get some gloves as you can see. We also have some medicine for our first mama that we went and visited and we also have some money for her that she will use for doing uh, the screening. We have also gotten a blood pressure machine, a new blood pressure machine. And this machine, uh, we are going to donate it to the community uh, where people will be screening uh, their blood pressure for free. Uh, we have also a glucometer. We believe that this glucometer will help uh, about five people in the community to be monitoring uh, their blood sugar. Because as we all know, monitoring of blood sugar is very key in the management of uh, diabetes mellitus. So we are going to give this one to the community such that they will be able to monitor uh, their blood sugar. Uh, we also have here some books. Uh, we are going to use these books for taking uh, our patient's notes and uh, our findings. For example, if we take the blood pressure and uh, blood sugar, we shall be recording in this book. So we shall be giving these books to all the people that we visit. We have also bought seedlings for about uh, 20 people. Here we've just taken uh, seedlings for the people we are going to visit today. Those are two people because wherever we go, we plant at least an orange and then a moringa uh, tree. Another thing is that he, uh, there is a child of diabetes type 1 that we are going to visit in the village. Uh, we want to teach these people about diabetes, the causes, how they can manage it. And above all, we want to concentrate on the diabetic diet. And that's why we went yesterday to the market and we bought them, <laughs> and we bought them some food such that we can uh, demonstrate how uh, these people can feed this child such that at least uh, the blood sugar will be controlled. So uh, right now, I am going to take you back to where we started from. Well, thanks to those people that donated to buy those things too with Afrin. If you want to get into, interested in that, all the links will be in the description. Now, I'm not quite sure about the gum boots. <laughs> I suppose it gets very muddy in villages and there is a risk from snakes as well. So there you go. I don't quite understand that, but trust Rafafa's judgment. Now, the blood pressure meds, we saw that lovely lady in the village, of course, who didn't have blood pressure medication, is now bought those and will be supplying her with those medications and is distributing some blood pressure machines. That's what the books are for, actually. There's, there's a town of about 11,000 people with no health centre. So we're going to measure everyone, well, Fafa's going to measure everyone's blood pressure there and um, train up people to measure the blood pressure. And community leaders will record it in the books, identifying those that are hypertensive so they can be uh, advised accordingly and prevented uh, and, and given preventative treatments. And the glucometers are going to measure the blood glucose levels. Again, because there's so much um, undiagnosed diabetes mellitus type 2 and again, if it's undiagnosed, it will damage the organs and cause uh, disease and premature death. So very interesting things there. If you want to see we have Fafa in the market, um, that should be on tomorrow's episode or the next one we do. If you can't wait till tomorrow's episode, then you can get the whole box set, <laughs> the whole the whole episode directly from Fafa's channel on the link I'm going to post below. So um, there we go. The, the episode where it's in the market actually is really interesting. So um watch that okay that is us for today thank you for watching